I am delighted to say this so soon. Welcome to the third episode of the Pokemon White Shiny Badge Quest Nuzlocke. I was expecting that the requirements needed to record this episode would take much longer than it did, but I'll get into that soon. For now, let's once again give Panpour and Snek a round of applause for clutching out the Deathless Lenore fight from episode 2. Way to go, y'all. Immediately after our gym battle, Lenora rushes to the museum exhibits after being alerted by Hawes of Team Plasma's presence. We join them to find that Team Plasma has taken the Dragon Skull and that we need to retrieve it. Upon leaving the museum, we meet Berg and catch up with Bianca and Sharon, who agree to assist in the recovery of the Dragon Skull. Bianca gives us the dowsing machine before she goes off with Sharon. Now that we have some time to breathe, it's time for the next hunt to begin. After going to the outside of Pinwheel Forest and spending around 42 hours finding our target, we finally have our next team member. After 11,911 total encounters, and on the third phase, Juiced, the shiny timber, is added to our team. After getting juiced so early, I can't help but be excited. Its IVs, unfortunately, could be better. Having a quirky nature, a neutral nature, Juiced's IVs are 22 in HP, 5 in attack, 31 in defense, 6 in special attack, 3 in special defense, and 13 in speed. At first glance, Juiced would seem pretty terrible. Acquiring only 80 of the 186 possible IVs, Juiced may seem not so jacked. However, looking past its irrelevant speed and special attack IVs, the only main issue I have is with its special defense and attack. Its special defense may matter if it needs to tank a psychic type hit later on, but the attack is the most important. Having Guts, as well, makes this Pokemon an absolute attacking powerhouse regardless of EVs and IVs, but having so little attack IVs could make a difference down the line. For now though, we can welcome Juice to the team! Our next battles won't be too bad, and Juice will get its time in the sun for sure. We need to investigate the Pinwheel Forest to find the Plasma Grunt that holds the Dragon Skull, and in Pinwheel Forest we need to pass a scary spinner and some hidden ranger mounds. This minefield of a forest has lots of optional trainers that we want to strictly avoid to allow our Pokemon to have the best EV investment possible before hitting the level cap. Additionally, all of the upcoming fights must be done with only one Pokemon in our party to avoid the otherwise required double battle at the beginning of the forest path. Our first required fight is against a Team Plasma Grunt who only has a Sand Dial. This Sand Dial feints to Snex Leaf Tornado easily which she hits without any problems. The second Team Plasma Grunt is next and she is a Purloin. Nick actually misses a Leaf Tornado, but can hardly be punished, and Purloin gets put away after the second one hits. Our first main obstacle in the episode is this youngster. After confirming with a fellow speedrunner in chat, I passed him by using a repel to negate encounters, standing two tiles away from the tile I planned to walk past, waiting until just after the spinner looks away from that chosen tile, closing the gap between the tile and pulling up the menu, and then closing the menu before walking past him. Speedrunning strats. Phew! The consequence for failing the pass would have been brutal, a 1 versus 2 with Snek against a high level Venipede and Sawaddle. Glad we passed those guys up. Our next fight is with a Ranger, whose Pansage has little ways to threaten Snek. Snek uses Growth once to enable a 2 shot using Tackle, and gets 1 Tackle off before getting paralyzed. No para hacks allowed us to Tackle again and we promptly manually healed Snek to avoid passing the spinner to go to the Pokemon Center. We sneak past a hidden ranger mound and fight a team plasma grunt next. His pat ride does die to a plus one leaf tornado, so it conveniently uses detect while we set up and let us take it out in the next turn. Nice. The final fight of the forest was similar to the last fight in the Nacreen City Gym, a trainer with a few low level Pokemon. There's no use in narrating this fight, they're a waste of breath, time, EVs, experience, and PP. Bye bye grunty boy. The Grunt reluctantly hands over the Dragon Skull before a Sage comes over and gives us death threats. It's a kid's game, come on. Lenora and Berg back us up and we return the Dragon Skull to Lenora. Before leaving Pinwheel Forest, Lenora gives us a Moonstone for our help and then we pick up a Miracle Seed on our way out. That'll probably come in handy with Snek later. Upon leaving Pinwheel Forest, we have officially reached the chillest area in the game, Sky Arrow Bridge. This music slaps. I encourage chat to vibe out with me, because I used to listen to this song a lot while doing homework, and I love listening to it every time I play through Gen 5, of course. Let's just blame chat's lack of participation on mobile delay, but you know, I was into it. Now that we have crossed Sky Arrow Bridge, we have bridged <laughs> the gap between our destinations and have reached Castelia City. 
Before engaging in the upcoming parts of the story, I take the time to grab lots of free and useful items. The Quick Claw, the Water Stone, the Rest TM, some free berries, and most importantly, the Eviolite. Before we can enter the Castelia City Gym, Charon stops us and announces his victory over Berg. He leaves and Berg comes out soon after, asking us to meet him at the Prime Pierre. At Prime Pierre, we meet Iris, who is seen comforting Bianca over her stolen Pokemon from Team Plasma. Aww. We meet Berg to take down the Plasma Grunts, which, luckily, we only have to fight one of. Panpour and its Mystic Water annihilate his two Sandile with a couple of Water Guns and we follow them inside. We meet Getsis and Team Plasma again, confronting them in some of the Seven Sages as Bianca and Iris join us in Berg. Team Plasma then returns Bianca's Muna and they all escape. Now that we've handled Team Plasma, it's time to challenge the Castelia City Gym. Before that, however, we have a lot of training to do with our underleveled Juiced. Before we can get back to our grinding location, we take down a trainer that guards the Pinwheel Forest Bridge with semi-ease, eventually outstalling the Sleep Moonlight stall from the youngster's Muna. Ugh. Now that we're free from required fights, we arrive at Route 1 and swap Juice to the front. Let's go to work. Our goal with Juiced is to get to 252 attack EVs, one-shotting every Patrat and Lilypup we encounter, regardless of level. Juiced learns Rock Throw at level 17 and caps out at 252 attack EVs shortly after hitting level 18. After a couple hours of grinding, we still haven't hit the level cap nor the EV limit, and we've only used one of our Pokemon. Now it's time to go to Wellspring Cave again for defense EVs. Juice two shots every rock and roller from Sturdy, regardless of level, learning Wake Up Slap at level 20 for some additional stab fighting type damage. Juiced caps out at level 23 after earning 78 defense EVs, which could have been better optimized by instead only beating level 2 Pat Rat and level 10 rock and roller, but Juiced isn't the main Pokemon we need to focus on before we finish this episode. We take a break from grinding and challenge the two gym trainers of the Castelia City Gym. On our way back though, we hit a spinner while trying to cross the Pinwheel Forest Bridge, but Panpour takes out this last Pokemon with ease. It two shots with Water Gun to take out the first Wubat, hitting level 22 and learning Scald over Water Gun. It then proceeds to one shot the following two Wubat with the help of the Mystic Water. Powerful. Now that Panpour has learned Scald, I can do something that people have suggested to me since episode 1 that I have noticed. Evolve Panpour. While we can evolve it as soon as we beat the Team Plasma Grunts in Wellspring Cave, digging through potential dust clouds for a water stone, we need to delay its evolution to get Scald, which is a necessary requirement for handling Berg, the Castelia City Gym Leader, and you'll understand why that is soon enough. Let's rejoice in the meantime though, for our speedy scalding Simipore has entered the building. Now that our team is pretty stacked, we enter the Castelia City Gym to challenge the Gym Trainers. While they both can be handled by Semipore, Juice takes the stage with his ultra buffed attack stat first. Juice uses work up to raise his attack on turn 1, and after missing a range on Swaddle, takes it out with a low kick. Swaddle did pose a huge threat having Razor Leaf for Semipore. This is why we opted to use Juice instead for this first battle. Venipede is in a range though, and Rock Throw hits to secure the win against the first trainer. We then tiptoe around the two optional trainers and solve the rest of the gym puzzle. Approaching the second trainer, I ready my Semipore with a Mystic Water again. Semipore, even before hitting the level cap, can deal some serious damage with such a high base power stab move as Scald, and paired with the Mystic Water can absolutely annihilate various opponents we will meet in the future. So we proceed to set up with plus 4 with Workup, allowing Scald to one shot the incoming Sawaddle as well as the Venipede. But something is missing. I then realized that I can nickname Semipore. I could have done this as soon as I entered Castelia City, which is too bad, but you know what? Better late than never. Castelia City is home to the Name Raider, who eagerly allows us to change the nickname of our Semipore to, drumroll please, Aquamono. At long last, after much honorable play, welcome to the team, Aquamono. 
With its fresh new name, Aquamono has some serious EV training to do. We trek all the way to Route 2 and begin the third stage of this episode's training, Purloin Speed EV Grinding. Any and all Purloin will do at a rate of 20% on Route 2, eventually getting Aquamono to the EV limit of 510. This took around 5 hours to accomplish, but here's Aquamono's final EV investment at the end of this process. 235 in HP, 18 in attack, 79 in defense, 0 in special attack and special defense, and 178 in speed. Ideally, I would have chosen to grind special attack EVs on Aquamono for its high damage potential with stab water moves, but with so little options this early on in the game, we had to use it to allow Snex edging in episode 2, and have the remaining EVs be from its opponents and speed EVs as leftovers. In another life, Aquamono would get to show off how high its special attack can really get, but for now, its speed will be enough for it to carry its weight. Now it's time to edge our Snack, Aquamono, and Juice to the level cap of 23, defeating all kinds of trainers throughout Route 3 and the outer area of Pinwheel Forest. We not only edge all three of them, but we also hit the EV cap on Snack, receiving the following EVs: 254 in HP, 15 in attack. 84 in defense, 4 in special attack, 0 in special defense, and 153 in speed. Our super speedy and physically bulky Snack will continue to show off its super buff stats in many battles to come, capitalizing on that extreme tankiness it got from the Audino and Roggenrola, and, and using it to set up and dish out some high damage special attacks in the meantime. Again, special attack EVs would have been the choice pick for Snack, but the early game has little to offer in that regard but we made the most out of the 510 EV level cap for sure. Now that our team has edged all the way to the level cap, there's only one thing left to do before we're done, and quite possibly the most important thing, which is to challenge Berg. I make sure to teach Aquamono rest before we challenge Berg, a necessary component for the key to victory. And we ready our team with a citrus berry on Snek, a mystic water on Aquamono, and an EV light on Juiced, allowing us to challenge the buggy boss, Berg. Berg's team consists of Whirlipede, Dwebble, and the main threat, Lee Vanny. In order to stand a chance of defeating it, we need to set up Leech Seed with Snack and switch to Aquamono ASAP. Aquamono, after extensive calcs were performed, was judged to guarantee a one-shot on Lee Vanny, after setting up to plus 6 with workup and holding the mystic water, can one shot with Scald. In order to get to plus 6 though, it needs to stall out Whirlipede as long as possible, tanking as many hits as it can. In the first few moves, Whirlipede poisons Aquamono, but it doesn't use Screech. A double defense drop on Aquamono would call for an immediate switch out, but the poison was enough to keep me worried though. With the highest poison tail crit roll doing 24 damage and poison inflicting 4 damage every turn after Leech Seed, I knew I had to use rest on turn 7. At this point I was already plus 4, and although I only needed 2 more, I also needed to wake up really quick, without a Chesto Berry to wake me up immediately. Whirlipede actually crits me just as I rest, and then poisons me as soon as I wake up, but I was able to set up 2 more workups. I used Scald to take out Whirlipede, leveling both Aquamono and Snek to 24, and teaching a more accurate Mega Drain to Snek over Leaf Tornado in the process. Lee Vanny emerges from Berg's end, and I once again put my hope and faith into mathematics, and... Lee Vanny is no more. With the potential to wipe my team, I'm so happy that Lee Vanny couldn't do anything. I'm so glad I prepared a plan beforehand. Timber was ready to tank some hits as backup though, and I was willing to work up and even use a Guts Boots potentially to its advantage on Whirlipede. Nevertheless, Aquamono seals the deal and its Scalds double down, earning our team the Insect Badge.
With all that battling said and done, I could not be happier with how this episode went. Juice came much earlier than expected. All my EV training paid off and it will continue to show off as the episodes carry on. And finally, the thorough planning I did for Berg turned an otherwise risky fight into an almost ensured victory. I am ecstatic with my performance and luck and can't wait to keep going. So as always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you for episode 4 of the Pokemon White Shiny Badge Quest Nuzlocke.